Well, I don't know if this is going to make any sense or not because this is my first attempt at addressing this concept, which I am going to call the hope for parallel minds. <laughs> I think that's probably the basis for all relationships, some of which end up in marriage. You hope you have parallel minds. And the conversations will take into account each other's feelings with some kind of magical understanding which is impossible but uh, one thing that's become really apparent to me lately is that well is that uh, the fact that everybody's on their own track everybody's got their own things going on now that may sound like a stupid statement obviously <laughs> of course everybody's got their own things going on <sighs> but for uh i don't know maybe it doesn't matter but uh i think we all have this concept of yeah i'm gonna find somebody who really understands me and i'm going to be able to talk and they're going to be able to relate. And we're going to be on the same wavelength. And we're going to go forward together and conquer the world. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know what the divorce rate is. I know it's big. And I'll tell you exactly how big it would be if people didn't feel financially trapped in relationships, it would be a hundred percent. If it's 50% now, I mean, maybe, and I don't know what kind of people actually, you know, this seems like an unlikely thing that two people would ever get together. And how boring would that be? I mean, you do want a little bit of conflict and a little bit of argument and a little bit of back and forth. But you don't want someone who's just pretending to listen to you and thinking their own stuff and just waiting to, uh, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go. See you later. <laughs> and, um, uh, so I've had a number of uh, male friends come to me, not come to me, but just not like, you know, they're not coming to ask me advice, but I've just interacted with them. And, uh, you know, they're on the, they're on that uh, precipice, you know, it's, uh, should I pull the plug? Uh, she's annoying the shit out of me. I just can't stand her anymore. And, uh, <laughs> So it's a dream, isn't it? It's a, it's a fantasy that uh, you're going to find someone who's just like me. And you're going to go along and you're going to be able to say whatever's on your mind. And the other person is going to nod in agreement or acceptance or whatever. Uh, that's just not a reality. Yeah, I just, at this point in time where, you know, the fear of God and until death shall we part, you know, and that's not a real thing anymore. And, and uh, we have access to so many different ways of thinking and so many other people. Um, I guess it's just a concept for us old fuckers. 
You know, we used to think, yeah, you're going to find somebody, you're going to have this magical relationship. And, and, uh, but I never really saw one. Did you? I mean, there was some joking going on. Yeah, you can, I remember my, uh, grandparents and I remember my great uncles and aunts and, you know, they'd known each other so long that they'd make eat, make fun of each other, but uh, they really didn't like to hang out with each other at all. <laughs> and I don't think that's a unique situation. So, whatever. <laughs> I've never been married and I've never managed to have a long-term relationship uh not not very long anyway so uh yeah what a bummer <laughs> the whole concept of uh and you have to wonder the whole concept of hope for meaningful relationships and you have to wonder who the hell shot thought this shit up you know, that you could find, you know, you could take the glass slipper and put it on Cinderella and, oh, forevermore. Ooh. So, uh, it's a natural disappointment. And, uh, I don't know if anybody ever accepts that it's just not possible. And, uh, and I guess, uh, we all hang on to those, uh, whatever they are, the one or 2% or 3% that look like they're still in love and getting along and so on and so forth. And we hang on to that and think, well, that's what we should be doing. That's what, but there's something wrong with my wife or my husband or, so we can't do that. But that's, that's what should be happening. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm going to bet those people are faking it. They're faking it. Hey, take a look at that movie on Golden Pond. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, I don't think it's so much that you fall in love. I mean, a wonderful movie, wonderful movie. Catherine Hepburn and uh, Henry Fonda and Jane Fonda. And so Catherine Hepburn, Henry Fonda are the old cranky couple. And you know, they don't really have <laughs> any kind of interaction other than just, you know, griping at each other. But uh, that's, uh, that's probably the way it goes. And they seem to be in love in a weird way. And so then you have to start adjusting those X, but well, what is love? Love, is, well, maybe we need to change the spelling. It's like, T-O-L-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E. <laughs> and so what love comes down to, in my opinion, is just uh, a comfort with the familiar. You get used to something. And you don't want to deal with change. So people pretend that there's something more than just environment and, you know, getting used to that environment. They call it something else. They call it love. We've been in love for 70 years now. No, no, you haven't. <laughs> You're just used to being able to predict what's going to happen next and 
and not be too surprised at any given point in time. And you don't want to deal with something new or unexpected. Which were the exciting things when we were young, right? I mean, and then at some point that shift hits. Some shift in your mind. You go from needing to experience new things to immediately needing to not experience new things. What a mess. What a mess. I was just looking at this tonight on the internet. All these couples that are separating. I guess that's uh, it's a hard it's a hard reality to come to. You know, you realize that. Um, At my age, surely, uh, I am never going to have a relationship with someone that is anything like that possibility of a relationship that we imagined all our lives. At this age, it's going to be, okay, Let's see if we can do something together and not get sick of each other. Maybe we can, well, let's go to the gym. Let's go to the gym and you go do some yoga and I'm gonna go swim and, uh, and then we'll, mm, and then after that, we'll you know, shower up and get back together and we'll go to Starbucks and uh, order coffee together and sit there and we'll have, you know, a couple of minutes of conversation. What'd you, what'd you do in yoga today? Oh, well, you know, you know, blah, 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 blah. Oh, how was the swim? You know, blah, 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 blah. And then you're just looking for the next way to get away from the person. Even though you need them for whatever image sake or to perpetuate the myth that there are reasons for people to hang out together for life for life <laughs> oh boy there has to be a book written on this somewhere about the impossibility of permanent relationships it just doesn't work i mean so now, and here's the contradiction, and I've already contradicted myself, but you want the familiar, but at the same time, you get so bored with the familiar that you can't stand it so much that you've got to get out and find something unfamiliar, new, now in the, in the form of another person. And you get a little bit of that, and then... You realize, well, yeah, it's not that different. I'll get tired of that too. So I guess it comes back to that uh, classic saying, you know, you, you're born alone and you die alone. And I'm fully on board with that now. <laughs> but I, I do like to glance off of people here and there. But it doesn't take long to realize, okay, that's enough. Go away. <laughs> and I think if most people were honest with themselves, they would say the same thing. Or if they weren't cowards. Or if they weren't financially intertwined. Or if they weren't whatever but 
maybe, maybe here's the golden, the, uh, oh, what do I want to say? The optimistic outcome of all this, or the, uh, what do you call it? The, the saving grace. <laughs> if we all notice this, if we all were to somehow recognize this, acknowledge this fact, maybe um, we'd be better off together for maybe a little longer than normal. Yeah, you get together with a friend, you go, hey, hey, you know, we're gonna get tired of each other here pretty soon, but let's see how long we can make it last. <laughs> maybe if that were, if there were that kind of honesty, instead of all the pretending, the faking, and the financial foolery, the world might be a better place. Hell, I don't know. All I know is I can't stand people for more than a few minutes. <laughs>